Today, we're going to talk a little bit about punctuation and think about how we use punctuation in our sentences. Uh, we have commas, we have semicolons, we have colons, we have periods. And so we're going to talk a little bit about how in our Christian lives, what kind of punctuation do we use? So here we start. Today in our tradition, we celebrate All Saints Day. It is a day to bind those persons who are part of the heavenly realm with those that are present here today in the earthly realm. And if we're to find out a scripture that helps us to learn what it means to be an earthly saint, we turned to the book of Ephesians, the first chapter. In his letter to the Ephesians, Paul writes, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. See, he says all the saints, not some of the saints, not some of the saints you like and not the ones you don't like, but all the saints. Whenever Paul talks about saints, he's talking about disciples in the church, you and I. He says a group of people who have been chosen by God and set apart by God to do God's work in the world. Saints. They're holy people. But their holiness, our holiness does not come from achieving perfection in life, but rather as being marked as God's people through our actions. You know, it's very hard to see who Christians are. It's not through what we wear. People wouldn't know that we're Christians. But they know that we are Christians through our love of neighbor, through our love of God, how we act and serve in the world. Thomas Merton, he talks about being a saint. He says, a saint is not someone who does just good, but it is someone who knows the goodness of God. Friedrich Buechner, I have two, one that I've used several times. A saint is when God drops a handkerchief in our lives. I was going through some old stuff when I first started here, and I recall there was a, a publication that would go from church to church, and they would um, visit the worship service, and then they'd do an article. And they did an article on All Saints Day when I used that Frederick Buechner where God, a saint is when God drops a handkerchief in our lives. And then if you remember last week when we talked about Zacchaeus, and Frederick Buechner said, Zacchaeus, he went up the tree a sinner, but came down the tree, what? A saint. You were listening last week. Good for you. God chooses us and sets us apart. We are holy people serving our holy God and Paul gives us three signs of what it means to be a saint. And the first is this, our faith in Jesus. It means trusting that Jesus is the way to God, that we follow Jesus' teachings in our lives. And it is a lifelong journey. It can start when we are infants and we're baptized and our parents or our sponsors vow that they will promise to bring us up in the life of the church. It can start when we're confirmed, when we make publicly that pronouncement that I'll support the church with our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. It happens when we're adults. It happens when we transfer from another church. Whatever it may be, being a saint is when we promise to love God and to love neighbor. That is simply the role of a saint, plain and simple, to follow Jesus in our daily walk. The second is this, as we heard in the scripture, love toward all the saints. We don't get to pick and choose. Wouldn't that be great to pick and choose who we like and don't like? But as Christians, we're called to love all saints. We're all part of the family of God. And as we heard from the book of the Gospel of Mark, the person says, what must I have to have eternal life? What does it mean to follow Jesus? And it says, one, love the Lord your God with all your mind, body, soul, and strength. And then what? Love your neighbor as yourself. I don't know about you, but I love myself. And we're called to love others too. Love of neighbor. It means service to others. Buckets for hurricanes, food for the poor, rebuilding together that we're going to hear a little later 
about that project that we did yesterday here at Doolin. There are so many ways that we reach out to serve others in the name of Jesus Christ. And then the third is this, which is from Ephesians. It says that we are called to have a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Wisdom and revelation. Paul writes, I pray that the Lord of our God, Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. And what does that mean? It means we know that our God is a God of hope and not a God of despair. It means that we are part of that great communion of saints, both here on earth and also in heaven. It means that we know the greatness and the goodness of God, and there is no limit to God's power. That is wisdom and revelation. Getting back to the punctuation, I found a quote from Grace Allen of Grace and George Burns. And when she died, they found a quote that she had written, and it goes like this. Never put a period where God has placed a comma. Listen to that again. Never put a period where God has placed a a comma. Being a saint means not having the punctuation of periods in our lives, but commas. We were all taught in grade school, what is a period? It's the way that you end a sentence, and that's it. But when we have a comma, we say we went to the store, comma, and then we did this, comma, and then we did that. And that is what Christianity, being a disciple of Jesus Christ, is all about. That it's all about commas, commas, commas of how we serve God and how we serve neighbor. And there are no periods. And the good news is that for saints eternals, when we die and go to heaven, there's still a comma because we're up with God, praising and glorifying. That's the joy of being Christian. In the early church, people were so persecuted, they couldn't wait to die. Because they knew in heaven there would be no pain but they would be that they're glorifying Jesus and God. That's so hard for us to do because we're so well off. We fear death. But the Christian life is to embrace death. Imagine. No more traffic. Imagine. No more elections. Imagine, no more worries, no disease, but simply being part of that glorious cloud of witnesses in heaven, praising and glorifying God. The point of being a saint today on earth is to have those commas in our lives, and not the period. Our service to God, our love of God, our service to neighbor, never ends, but we keep going and going and going. So today, we give thanks for saints who have left us. Hillary Wood, who I think about when she was in her assisted living place, she would always call and want her offering envelopes. She would not send cash in the mail on its own. She wouldn't send it in an envelope. She had to have that offering envelope every week. And what she would do is she would send it once a month, and she wouldn't put it all in one month, but she'd have four envelopes there with her check. She had four checks. She had it every single week. I think about Linda Martin, an usher for us weekly, and her love of gardening When I did her service of death and resurrection, it was just full of gardeners in our area that knew her and her love of nature. I think of Miriam Manzana. She truly practiced love of neighbor and love of God. And I think about her stewardship of money. I knew Miriam didn't have much, but she would just hand me cash And she would say, give this to the church or give this to help someone. 
And she could have used that money as well, but she practiced the need to love God through her giving and love of serving neighbor. I think of Chuck Stratton and his love of Appalachia Service Project. Chuck lived to be part of the Appalachia Service Project. And I think of Annie Byers, a longtime disciple here at Doolin Church, that as she got older, she would have her son and daughter come bring her to church until she was no longer physically able to come. And then we give thanks for our new saints as well. And that is the joy, friends, that in a church of COVID, of post-COVID, that we can rejoice that we have new saints that are here to um, uh, provide love and service to us all and that we don't have just decline, decline, decline. Because, my friends, that is a sign of a healthy church, a church that works together to love God and neighbor. And friends, that is the good news. As each and every one of us gathered here celebrate our saintliness in life. And we all say together, Amen.